So my name is Dr. James Anthony. I'm a veterinary dentist. Uh, I'm, an, I'm a veterinary dentist for many, many years. I was in the inauguration class uh, of uh, the American Veterinary Dental College and basically has helped uh, start the European Veterinary Dental College as well. I Before that, I was with the uh, Academy of Veterinary Dentistry and how I got started basically was I was uh, graduated and in your first job, you get all the lousy jobs and mine was pulling teeth. <laughs> and I did what I caught, thought was the standard of care. And I realized very soon that, you know, we should be doing things a little bit different than this. There, this is not right. There's something wrong here. And then I just self-taught myself after that. And as a result, uh, I found a few colleagues that had similar interests. We started groups and then basically started organizations. I have worked as a, a general a practitioner in the first few years, but uh, rapidly became a specialist in dentistry. And as a specialist in dentistry, I have done many, many animals throughout the world, uh, and not just dogs and cats, anything from little vampire bats to uh, killer whales, so and everything in between. And as a result, I've got a wealth of information on a variety of different animals, and I've done everything from basically teeth cleanings to orthodontics to implants, facial reconstruction, the list goes on. So I've done all aspects of veterinary dentistry. On top of that, I've taught uh, throughout the world. I've taught at a number of universities. I've been on staff at a few universities and was a tenured professor at the University of Saskatchewan, where I started a, a, a veterinary dental course, and they're still using that. And it's probably the most comprehensive course worldwide, which I'm happy to say. And I have started uh, organizations in third world countries, such as Brazil and the Philippines, and have talked internationally as well as locally. Uh, incidentally, I've been to every province in Canada and every state in the United States, except for three, Nebraska, Delaware, and our, our Oklahoma. <laughs> Those are the three states I haven't been to. And uh, so I've, I've been around and I have done a lot of research. I've worked in uh, referral hospitals in mainly in Los Angeles and also in New York or rather New Jersey at Red Bank Veterinary Hospital. These are major hospitals that are world renowned and have uh, an excellent staff. And as a result, have started a lot of new concepts and ways of doing things. I could go on, but I think I will. Bore that is everybody. an amazing resume. That is so cool. Um, so, so literally, you were on the ground floor uh, because I graduated in 1984, and literally at that point, it was just like you said. We never talked about teeth. We never talked about dentistry, and we would wait until these animals came in with these really rotten, horrible smelling mouths, and nobody could stand it anymore. And then we would just yank all the teeth, and that was, you know, kind of what was available. Um, and I, I, I had this saying for so many years that if I saw a seven-year-old Yorkie that still had any teeth left, that was like the miracle dog because yes. they just didn't. Um, so, I, you know, I, I applaud you for um, for your pioneering work and I, then, you know, for being so passionate about it that not only did, did you undertake it for yourself, but to teach so many people on a, on a worldwide level, it's, it's incredible. And um, I think all of the animals thank you as well. And I think that's so cool. Vampire bats up to kill her whales. <laughs> okay. I, I do dogs and cats. <laughs> <laughs> I get my horses. Hi, to <laughs> you know, you, all we have to do is divide them into three, either they're carnivores, omnivores or herbivores. And that's and they have different uh, oral structures and different ways of mastication, and as a result, basically, you would adapt to their meet their needs. That's it. That is amazing. Different, but <laughs> that is that's very about cool. it. So one of the things that I'm really passionate about is senior pet care. Um, and partly because, like I said, for so many years, we didn't talk about dental care at all. Mm -hmm. And then I think that 
the diet so that we have, we're feeding our carnivores the, the wrong diets. We're feeding them carbohydrate based diets. We're feeding our, our more omnivorous uh, dogs, something that is still a really highly carbohydrate laden diet, you know, more of a plant based diet. Mm -hmm. So I think, in my opinion, I think that contributes to a lot of the dental disease that we see, because we're not feeding them the way their oral structure is made to to really chew and, and work the teeth and gums. How, how important do you think diet is in relation to the amount of dental disease that we see? Or do you think that it is really all just related to the fact that we, I mean, wolves have not brushed their teeth. Cougars don't brush their teeth. Do we see the kind of dental disease that we're seeing in our domestic pets in, in like the zoo animals and the wild animals that are eating something that was closer to what they used to eat? Okay. First of all, you have about three or four questions there. I know. The I, one, it just kind of rambled. <laughs> no worries. Okay. The first thing is, as far as uh, nutrition goes, uh, personally, I feel that it's essential to have proper nutrition to get proper health. And it's not just dentistry. It's the whole body. So you've got to start out with, you know, the basics. Let's get down to a good diet. Ideally, the best diet you ever make is the one you can make yourself, but unfortunately, to do it right, it takes a lot of time and effort, as I'm sure you're well aware. And there's a lot of science to it as well. Convenience factor, that's why most people go to some pet foods. And are they great? I won't say they're great. However, they're adequate. And and there are some, you know, specialty diets now for animals for certain disease conditions, and one of them is dentistry. And they are good as far as dentistry is concerned. However, my feeling, personal feeling about them as a diet is that they're lacking. As a result, what I recommend for the dental diets is to use them as a treat. So that way you get the benefits of the dental diet, but you can augment the nutritional value with something more substantial right. and as we get a balance of things. As far as uh, the other questions that you mentioned, I'm forgetting which ones they were. <laughs> so you have to repeat that for me again. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so you answered that part, which is great. Thank you. Cause I kind of agree with, you know, if you're going to use the, those dental diets that they really are not meant to be whole nutrition at, I don't know that they were ever really designed to be that, but that's kind of how they got marketed. But I agree if we use them as a treat and actually make them chew, because the the part of part of dental health is just that that grinding, grating action. Correct? Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, basically, the abrasion aspect of chewing will remove plaque and some calculus, which are really basically plaque is bacteria. Calculus has solidify bacteria in it. And bacteria is really what I consider the spark of gum disease. And as a result, what happens is there's a little bit of an irritation from bacteria, so a little bit of inflammation, but not much, probably only about 3% of, of the, you know, the total amount of, of inflammation that gets there. And then, but what it does do is it does have some endotoxins, which will cause some destruction of tissues in the gums, however, not very much. However, what it does do is it stimulates the host, meaning the animal's immune system, to overreact. And as a result, we get a, a basically a very exaggerated inflammatory response. And that inflammation, the byproducts from the inflammation, is what causes the tissue and bone destruction. And that can be extremely uh, bad. We as veterinarians, most of us have mainly concentrated prevention based on controlling bacteria with drug, antibiotics, with plaque removing mechanisms like brushing, dental diets, water additives, those types of things. But we've actually forgotten about the major cause, which is inflammation, like swelling, irritation. And as a result, I feel we've partially missed the boat here as far as getting proper control. And there's very there's a number of different products that will help reduce inflammation. Most of them are expensive. 
Most of them will, should only be used for a very short period of time. And as a result, basically ineffective for long-term use. There's very few that are, are actually beneficial long-term. Uh, the one that I feel you know, very pro about it, which I have been associated with the, the company that makes it, uh, is called 1TDC. It's 1-tetradecacodol complex. And actually, there's a story I, I should tell you about how I got involved with the company. I, When I first saw the, the product, the first time it was ever shown to me, I was very skeptical. <laughs> I, I, I tried to be see, I tried to see how things work. And I could get it in my mind how it works, how something swallowed could be beneficial for the mouth. Because I was used to controlling bacteria, plaque, and calculus. So what I did was I did a research project. And I, I was talking to uh, the people at Elite Science, and they they basically gave us some free material, but that was about it. So it was all the, the university's money to do the research project. And I did it to prove them wrong, because I thought this is there's no way this could really work. Well, after the project, which was a, a blinded study, so in other words, the evaluator, which was me, did not know which was the test group and which was the control group. And as a result, at the end, when we saw the statistics, it was so obvious uh, that there was one that was much better than the other. And we know that the basically the control group would not be that one. So it must <laughs> the animals must be... Uh, the ones on the test product, and it turned out to be. And the thing was, the results of all the periodontal parameters that we measured, all of them were not just statistically significant, but extremely statistically you know, significant. And mm -hmm. I actually phoned up one of the, the founders of the, of the product and said, you know, I owe you an apology. I did this project to do <laughs> to prove you wrong, and I am humbled to say that this isn't just good; it's excellent, and that's why I, I truly believe in this product. And they actually hired me as a consultant for the company. Well, you know, I think I, I talk about this all the time that you can skew the results of any study any way you want to. You can sort of, you know, report only the things that actually worked in your way or you go in with a preconceived notion. And so, you know, this is awesome. You went in with a preconceived notion of this is never going to work and then came out going, mm -hmm. holy cow, <laughs> it worked. <laughs> so, yes. so I and, love and, that. And I, you know, it's, it's like when you're like, no, no way. It's not going to work. <laughs> That's great. So what kind of... So tell me a little bit more about the study. Were these animals that came in and had dental work done and then the product was used afterwards? Or did you just take a group of animals with some periodontal disease? Some got the product and some didn't. How, what, how did you select who went into the study? Well, what we did was there was a, a number of research uh, cats that needed to be basically have their mouth cleaned up. And we had a big, long waiting list uh, to do cases, so we couldn't fit them in right away. So I said, instead of letting these animals suffer, <clears throat> why don't we do a, a research project? And basically, we just used the, the product once a day. And basically, we measured, before we started, we measured all the periodontal parameters that they had existing. And they all had advanced periodontal disease. In fact, a few of the animals had uh, severe stomatitis. And uh, as a result, uh, basically, they were basically uh, very helped a lot. And I'll tell more about that later on. However, they all had advanced periodontal disease. And randomly, uh, they were put on either the placebo or the test product, the, the one TDC. The placebo was basically olive oil. And so it's fatty acids, but and which has a very mild anti-inflammatory action, but it's very mild. And the, the one TDC is a fatty acid that has been 
chelated, which means that the hydroxyl group is replaced by an ester. And as a result, is totally different. And the mechanism of action is totally different. Anyways, we did the study for 63 days of these research cats. And I might add that uh, research cats usually are notorious for not wanting anything in their mouth because they know if the, the handler's going to catch them, they're going to do have something bad. Something bad. <laughs> exactly. However, after the second day, the cat started coming up to the researcher to get their treats. So as a result, uh, the palatability and acceptance for this product is amazing. And so as on, on these cats, I mean, and it's interesting that this is a cat study because cats can be so much more difficult to treat. Were you just feeding them the product or were you actually putting it on the gums? We actually put it on the lips or the gums. Okay. At once a day. And, you know, basically, if you put it onto a, a bowl, it's good if the cat eats it right away. But if not, it will go onto the bowl itself. And there's a lot of wastage. Mm-hmm. And as a result, you get the full benefit of the product. So it's better to put it on the, the mouth. However, uh, let's say, for example, the animals that have the ulcerative stomatitis, and the mouth, the real bad mouths that are red and inflamed and ulcers and fissures in the mouth, and they're extremely uh, painful. And as right. a result, anything on their mouth is taking your life in your hands, in a sense, a <laughs> bite or scratch, something like that. And as a result, what I say to do is to put it in the pina of the ear. So the inside of the ear, you leave it on for about 10 minutes because this product has a transdermal absorption. And when 10 minutes is up, basically 95% of the active ingredients are already absorbed and distributed throughout the body. And then just took a, a clean cloth and just gently wipe out the ear. And that way, after about two weeks, the ulcers and fissures are gone in the mouth. The animal's at least comfortable. It may not have complete resolution of the inflammation. However, it's quality of life has been greatly improved. Wow. I'm thinking of a couple of stomatitis cats that I had in practice that were just so ridiculously painful. I wish I, I wish I had been using this then. <laughs> Poor kitties. <laughs> well, if you use just that product and basically do it for a month and what I do is I double the dose personally. So I increase the dose to twice, twice a day instead of once a day. And as a result, in a month's time, all the fissures and uh, ulcers are gone. Mm-hmm. You will get a minimum of a 30% improvement. Minimum. Okay. Mm-hmm. I've seen some of the juvenile stovatitis, the ones that occur in young animals, completely resolve 100%. Now, that's not always the case. You know, that's more the exception than the rule. However, th- their quality of life drastically improves. And that's really what it's all about is improving the quality of life. And basically one TV is not a, really a drug. It's more of a, it's a nutraceutical. Right. And so I would think overdosing I, it is pretty hard to do. So, you know, doubling up the dose, I don't think that's going to be a problem. <laughs> no, not at all. Basically there's really no, no study that has shown that it's even toxic. Yeah. Uh, all, all the just studies said, no, it's fine. I mean, I had a little Yorkie uh, that ate a whole large bottle of one TDC, like 120 capsules, and didn't even get diarrhea. So I I was shocked. So so basically, it is very well tolerated as far as uh, any side effects. So there's no interactions with other drugs or anything like that. So it's a very safe product to use. Now, is that the miracle drug, of course not. There's no such thing as a miracle drug. But there's other things. Wouldn't it be so easy? <laughs> I, wish. I wish. But no such luck. But, the, you know, there's a lot of benefit from it. But there's other things that you can do. That's where some plaque and, and bacterial control is definitely warranted. You know, brushing the teeth, water additives, a dental diet as a treat. Uh, all those types of things will help basically take away that little spark 
up the bacteria and prevent that fire, which means inflammation. So, you know, I think most people can associate that a spark causes a tiny bit of a burn in your carpet or whatever, but the fire, the burning of the house down is the most destructive part. So they can relate to that analogy quite easily. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. This is something that as a new graduate way back in the mid 1980s, I noticed in my patients and I, you know, once I sort of made this little analogy, I saw the same thing over the next 40 years. Dogs and cats with kidney disease make a different kind of plaque and tartar than your average Joe without kidney disease. So as the kidney disease, it, like the worse their kidney disease gets, the worse, and it's a different, it's a, like a bumpy kind of tartar that they get. It looks very different from what I would see just in your, you know, dirty mouth animal. Is, am I, am I way out in left field with this or do you see different dental issues with these animals with kidney disease because i've got one right now who's in heart failure and kidney disease mm -hmm. on a bunch of medications his mouth is totally different from everybody else they are different in the sense that they accumulate plaque and calculus much more rapidly than normal healthy animals the it's the same plaque and calculus the only thing with the plaque is it's more uh mucousy and as a result, not as watery, if you can say that. Mm -hmm. And as a result, it's, it attaches to the, the dentition of the teeth, meaning far more rapidly than, the, say, regular plaque. So it's the progression is exacerbated. And as a result, that's where control is even more so and important. Now, the one thing that's really interesting is that basically – the World Health Organization has shown a very, very strong association with diseases of aging with periodontal disease. So let me clarify, it's not a cause and effect. So in other words, if you have periodontal disease, are you going to get these other diseases? The answer is no. However, if you have periodontal disease and other factors are mixed together, you will get basically heart disease, kidney disease, liver disease, joint disease, Alzheimer's, obesity, uh, the list goes on. So all these diseases of aging are related to periodontal disease or chronic inflammation. So if we can help inflammation in one area, we will help control inflammation in other areas. Right. The problem. One TDC, basically, it works through basically the inflammatory cascade by not just affecting one area, but it basically affects areas such as cytokines, prostaglandins, uh, collagenases. All these are basically things that destroy different parts of the dentition. And as a result, by helping control it, it actually basically will prevent this inflammation from not just the mouth, but all over. Let me explain how in simplistic terms. What happens is the product is rapidly absorbed through the body and to, through the gums and through any mucous membrane and also transdermally. And there it has a, basically an affinity to bind to what we call a certain type of white blood cell called T helper cells. And these are distributed throughout the whole body and rapidly spread throughout the whole body. And where there's active inflammation, there is a release of a lot of secondary chemicals that are destructive. And basically that causes the release of the one TDC from the T helper cell, and then is attracted to the damaged and injured cells and it gets rapidly absorbed into it and then stabilizes it. So it doesn't produce any more inflammatory byproducts. And that's how we get control of the inflammation. So 
logically, it uh, will help with any inflammation for that matter, not just the mouth. However, we, the company has only done research on some joint disease and also dental disease. So as a result, you can't say that it helps with those other areas. But my experience is it does. I mean, the biggest problem I had with complaints about this product was, you know, people coming back after for a recheck in a month's time. And they were saying, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm upset because now the dog jumps up at six o'clock in the morning and wants to go for a walk. You know, the joints are better, you know, type of thing. Or the cat's jumping up onto the table and eating my food. You know, the, you know they're complaining. You know, it's a nice complaint to have as a veterinarian. So, you know, I, I can't say that uh, it was a complaint at all. <laughs> Actually, I had, not related to the product, but I had a similar complaint when I first started doing chiropractic work. And I had a Doberman, uh, lived in New York City, and uh, the dog was you know getting pretty arthritic and so we started yes. working on the dog and the dog started jumping on the furniture and it couldn't do that before and the owner said but i don't want him to jump on the furniture <laughs> I, said, I can't undo it we fixed it <laughs> I said, now you gotta train <laughs> but she, well he never That's used to true. get on the furniture <laughs> well he couldn't <laughs> so well, yes i mean we <laughs> Well, great. So we're going to fix the cats. They're now going to be climbing everything. But you know what? For cats, um, vertical space is really important in their lifestyle and their well-being. So if we have kitty cats Absolutely. who can't get that vertical space, that's a problem for them. So and right now I happen to have 13 cats. It was sort of accidental. So, you know, we need vertical as well as horizontal space to space out 13 cats. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think that's know, critical. And, and we're talking about these diseases of aging, I mean, that's seniors, you know? So when we see seniors getting these diseases, it's from basically inflammation long-term. Yeah. Uh, some places it could be the mouth, could be elsewhere. So as a result, helping be proactive about uh, controlling inflammation, I feel will really help a lot with these seniors. And do we have long-term studies on that? Not yet. Well, we certainly need, I would love to see, uh, so, and, and I'm gonna ask, uh, do you recommend starting this inflammation control when they're youngsters rather than waiting until they already have all this disaster going on in their mouth? Absolutely, being proactive is the whole, basically, sense of having proper health. You want to keep that health healthy state. Don't want it to get a hold of it and cause other damage to the body because then it becomes more of a roller coaster type of experience for that uh, animal. So we want to basically have their quality of life be a great quality of life long term, not short term. Right. And as a result, being proactive and doing things preventatively is really the key to success, to long-term success. So, so I yes. Know, I know it would take, you know, a couple of decades <laughs> really to do those long-term health studies. Um, but do you know, like, do you have any experience, like personal experience with clients or do you know of anyone who has set up anything where they took this type of product and started young animals on it and used it throughout their lifetime and, you know, saw slowing down, delayed, delayed degeneration. I mean, I, I mean, I would love to take a... Uh, this is one of those where you start with a you know a litter of 12 puppies and you say six of you get this and six of you get this and i think it would be really interesting to see do we delay that onset of inflammatory changes do we delay the onset of periodontal disease or prevent it do you, do you know of anything that's been done to see whether it would prevent it well there there hasn't been any long-term study by any means uh I, because the product is actually relatively new. It's right. only 10, 10, 12 years old. So it's not uh, a long uh, you know, experience with the product. Uh, 
I have used probably about pretty close to about maybe 20,000 cases uh, wow. over my career. So, cause I started early with it and I recommend it pretty dear for 99% of animals. So starting and, young. Yes. Okay. And, and, you know, old, you know, both. Well, well yeah, I so, mean, start anytime, but it, it, you know, if you wanted to be really proactive and you, you know, I'm asking this for those who are saying, okay, I'm, I'm getting a new puppy. Uh, at at what right. point would I start this? I would think about it. The best time to start is as soon as they start teething. It's teething, there's inflammation, gingivitis, which is, you know, inflammation and it hurts the animal. So reducing the inflammation will help. That also causes a bacteremia and all those types of things uh, with their chewing and whatnot, which can lead to other problems. However, most times the body will control that by itself as long as the animal is healthy. However, uh, you know, should we start uh, early in that? It won't be wrong. It's just that I, I would start probably at least about when they're about 14 weeks or so, like uh, basically continue. And it, uh, I mean, it's just long -term, term benefits. And also, everybody loves to give treats. So you <laughs> give it as a treat, and, and cat both love it. And as a result, basically, compliance is not an issue, acceptability is not an issue. And as a result, it's a win 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 for everyone. The whole idea here is to make it as easy as possible and acceptable to everybody. And that's where, you know, basically the palatability is, is wonderful. So basically it's, it, it's an easy give to these yeah. pets. Uh, yeah. Dr. Judy, I, I have, oh, sorry, Dr. Anthony. Uh, I have a fun little story for you in what you're asking. Um, because you asked me, you know, when should you start? And do we have any experience so anecdotally, I have a great story for you because it's it's really a great testimony for the USA, and I'll explain to you. So one TDC is used a lot in the canine sports environment, specifically dog agility. So we have this dog, a little mixed terrier, that has been taking the product when it was very young. Well, now you're eight years later. Now, when you're eight years old and you're a dog and you're competing in dog agility, you're an old dog. That's just <laughs> the reality. Well, here's the good news. So little Sunday, Handler's name is Angie, just a few months ago won the European Open Dog Agility, the very first time the U.S. has ever won it with an eight-year-old dog. Not only did they compete at a super high level with a great handler, but it's an eight-year-old dog that actually won. So that's a little it's an anecdotal story, but it's pretty amazing that at that level, usually they start slowing down and speed. That dog is full blast and has been on the product probably six months old, very, very, very young. So we, from an athletic world, that's one of the things we've seen with those aging dogs is their speed and time retained. And those that started later and started as they were aging went back and at speed when they were just when they were younger. So there's definitely some benefit for all the dogs for quality of life is really kind of the bottom line. The championship winning it for the first time for the USA was amazing, but frankly, the most important part is how can we use that for those senior dogs that are not comfortable? So yeah. just a little anecdotal story for you. So I have a, a another question about the dental disease. So if someone has an, a dog or cat who already has a lot of plaque and calculus and inflammation, clearly starting the product will help decrease that inflammation that goes along with the periodontal disease. Is it going to do anything at all for the plaque and the calculus and buildup that's already there? As far as the calculus, which is the solidified plaque, no. Okay. As far as plaque itself, because we basically, uh, the product will reduce inflammation and as a result, it can potentially change what we call the microbiome. That's a big term for meaning that the bacteria in the area of the gum line. And as a result, that could reduce the plaque. We do see a, a minor reduction in plaque, at least I have, 
Uh, and as a result, uh, I do feel that it does decrease it. Definitely the breath smells better. And that usually bad breath is an indication that there's some nasty bacteria that are proliferating there from, from the inflammatory state. So definitely I feel there's a, a contribute. It, it contributes to reducing plaque or changing the type of plaque from something really irritating to something that is not so irritating. Awesome. So what else do we not know about this product that we need to know? <laughs> What do we need? Well, it's, it's very inexpensive. So as a result, it's had to be used long term. So as a result, there's you know it's it's a great product. That's all I can say. As no far downside. as the product goes, the yeah, there, I mean it's in a sense, it's made from uh, grass-fed uh, uh tallow of beef. So it means the fats only. So the fat content allows it to be non-allergenic because we know that allergies are due to proteins. There's no protein in this, so it's hypoallergenic in a sense. And it's as natural as you can get it. Uh, sure, it is from animal fat, but uh, unfortunately, these animals are going to be used for something sooner or later. And basically, as a result, uh, you know, I feel it's a, a, a benefit uh, for these, for, for all the animals that take it. And as a result, uh, it's one of those things where the animals love it. The animals uh, crave for it. And actually, a lot of clients tell me they give it at the same time. And the animal's just waiting for that treat. You know, the, they tell them, hey, it's my time to have that treat. So it's, they can condition the owners about uh, get, getting it. I have yet to see a side reaction of it. It uh, is, it, I mean, the only times that I, the only time that I would say that there, it should not be given is if the animal's vomiting. So in other words, does it have pancreatitis or does it have chronic active pancreatitis? Does it have inflammatory bowel disease or colitis? Those types of things. In those cases, what I will do is I'll put it in the peanut of the ear. So that way it doesn't affect gut. And yet we have the benefits of controlling inflammation. And, you know, it helps with those, those cases even I've noticed. So whether or not uh, it cures it, I don't see it curing, but it will help with controlling the inflammatory action. Perfect. So, um, so I think the only uh, question or concern that I have been receiving from um, clients, pet parents, is that hmm. the product has soybean in it. And so the question I get is, you know, as far as we know, all soybean is GMO. Um, and so when we, we get, I mean, pet parents are at the point where they want everything perfect and they want organic grass fed, mm -hmm. non GMO. How do we address that? And I'm not, you know, we are recording this and it's going to be edited. So you can say whatever you want here. We, we can edit it out, but yeah. I'm just asking because this is the question that I get most often. Yeah. yeah I can, I can probably I think Olivia would be probably the best person to answer that actually. Yeah. But, uh, I know that the content of uh, soybean is very minimal. So well, that's what I keep saying. <laughs> it's it's very minimal, and the truth. I mean, soybean oil actually has some benefits actually for heart health that sometimes people forget um, because they read one article and then there's this terror that's happening. Well, it's just um, everybody's I mean, you know non-GMO, blah 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 blah. Well, that's the thing. There's no traces of GMO in our soybean oil. We do test for that. So okay. that's what we always advise clients when they ask or veterinarians, we explain that so there's no traces of GMO into the product, period. And definitely in our soybean oil um, as well. Um, there's one point, if you don't mind, that um, I'd love to address for senior dogs as well for quality sure. of life. Um, you know, Dr. Anthony talked a lot about the absorption of one TDC. I have a senior dog. My dog is 13 years old. She's getting it in the mouth every day. 
Actually, I brush your teeth and then I put it on. But the part that's very important is senior dogs, we know areas where they have discomfort. In the case of my dog, Sasha, it's her knee. I mean, she had CCL tear on both knees, but one calcified a little bit more. And I know that I'm going to have issues and discomfort in that knee. So every day, and I would encourage all senior pet parents to do senior uh, pet parents that have senior dogs to do this. Put it on topically, wherever you know, if it's in the spine, in the hips, if it's in the knees, the elbows, in her case, it's the knee, every day she gets it. And I can tell you that makes a huge difference to put a lot of the product in that very specific area for comfort. So senior dogs can feel better by using it topically where you know there's an, an, an area of concern. Perfect. Perfect. Is there anything we didn't cover that you wanted to? Well, there's, there's things uh, about other forms of uh, home care or whatnot that I think would be proactive for seniors. Perfect. Uh, I mean, just back control. You know, I mean, calculus, if there's calculus in the mouth, they probably need a professional cleaning to, to get all of that off correctly. Because there's there's a lot of calculus that goes subjectively beneath the gum line. And to, to do that, uh, like, with basically non anesthetic uh, free uh, cleanings, you're not going to do a good job there. There's just no way. We absolutely uh, agree on that. <laughs> and as a result, you know, basically, you know, bite the bullet, get it done. It can be done safely. That's why they do blood tests, heart tests, all these things before the anesthetic to make it as safe as possible. And if, you know, if there is things that they can do to make it safer, they will before they do the procedure. So as a result, you know, by not doing it, you're basically you're allowing the animal to get sicker long term. So, ideally, you would try to prevent that from ever being needed. My, I'll give you an example. My dog, one of my dogs, I have two golden retrievers. One's ten years old. One is uh, seven years old. The ten year old and the seven year old, they've never had any dental work done. None. And it's all being proactive, preventative care. And, you know, for a 10 year old, that's pretty, pretty good not to have any dental work done. Things like, for example, the types of chew toys. Chew toys are, are helpful in removing some calculus and plaque, but you have to be careful about the type of chew toy. The bottom line with chew toys is you want to be able to bend it and possibly break it by bending it if you are going to give it to them. If you can't do that, that product is too hard and will break the teeth. So you're causing more problems. So that's the first thing. Second thing for plaque control, dental dyes is a treat. You know, the companies will say, no, it won't work and whatnot. Well, I have research that proves that it does. And, you know, they deny it, but uh, I, I'm up against big industry and now I'm going to lose. Simple as that. <laughs> uh, I have found that it works really well as a treat. You see, I get, like, for example, I'll use the Hills product and I'll use it as a, a treat to them every day. And I'll give about maybe about 10 kibbles per dog on a daily basis. It's about one kibble for every five pounds body weight. And I just give it whatever they want. And they love me because they love having that treat. And other areas, if you can brush the teeth, great. But let's face it, probably most people cannot brush effectively or, or that. But knowing how to brush properly also is important. Most people that I've seen that are brushing their pet's teeth, every single one has been brushing incorrectly. And as a result, not effectively. Right. So learning how to brush properly is, is very needed. We can talk about that if you want, or we can talk about other forms of plaque control. There's water additives that actually reduce plaque buildup by over 65%. 
some of them will only be as good as 20%. So they're not single entities. You need to use combination approaches on things to this. So as a result, if we can be proactive with reducing plaque and calculus and then reducing inflammation, we will have a much happier pet and a much longer living pet uh, because basically I mentioned about the effects of chronic inflammation on other organs in the body. By reducing that, we could have a longer lasting pet that's in having a great quality of life. Absolutely. Um, how do you feel about the water attitudes that are um, modifying the microbiome in the mouth? I can't say for all of them, but there, a lot of them are very good. Okay. And when they change the microbiome, they're using changing the microbiome that's negative, not the positive one. So I'm not advocating the use of this, say, antibiotics to control bacteria in the biome. Bottom line, antibiotics will get into the, what we call the matrix of that biome. It will basically kill the outer portion, but not the inner portion. So it will just come back with right. antibiotics. And as a result, I, I feel antibiotics are are kind of useless unless there's a tissue infection. You know, they, they have a place. It's just long-term preventative care has no place for, you know, antibiotics long-term. Uh, I think you're doing more harm than good, especially with the, the intestinal biome, meaning the bacteria in the gut. Uh, you will kill it off and you need to use probiotics. Probiotics are, are helpful and I would recommend probiotics basically to get a healthier biome of bacteria in the gut as well as in the mouth. But uh, again, is it uh, controlling the negative aspects of the biome? No, it's not. And as a result, that's where some plaque control is necessary. I know that's an elaborate answer for you. Oh, that, that was perfect. That was really perfect. Um and it's I, I I love to hear you using microbiome because <laughs> it, interestingly, you know, kind of in the traditional vet world, they're just now kind of talking about the microbiome and the holistic vets have been talking about it for over a decade going, hey, what about the microbiome? <laughs> so. Well, on, on a sideline, uh, I, I learned acupuncture in the late, uh, late 70s. So and, and that was in the Philippines. And uh, when I came to North America to vet school and uh, in my clinical years, uh, advocating to do acupuncture on some of these conditions and moxie as well, uh, I was almost kicked out of vet school. Yep. <laughs> I mean, that's changed right now, but I mean, seriously, I was, they had meetings that were, they were ready to kick me out. And, you know, basically what to save me was we did uh, surgeries where we didn't use anesthesia. We just used acupuncture as the analgesia. Amazing. And one of the doctors or one of the professors said, okay, we'll have the animal hooked up to IV with ready for with drugs and whatnot if they're in pain. And they weren't. And we did things like spays, uh, cystotomies. Wow. Um, interceptions just using acupuncture for the analgesia. Wow. Oh man, so, you're good. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, the only problem with it was I guess I was before my time because the public weren't ready to accept it, not in North America anyways. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was starting to get labeled as a quack. And <laughs> Welcome you know, to the club. <laughs> have to put food on your table, right? So, <laughs> so as a result, uh, I used more conventional methods that was readily accepted by the public. But I still did acupuncture on cases I felt that would really benefit. That's awesome. And yeah. So unfortunately, acupuncture won't work for oral health. So <laughs> I tried. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, you know, it's funny because I didn't have this product when I was practicing. And so the juvenile stomatitis that you were talking about, I had a cat. A uh, client got this new cat and um, terrible juvenile stomatitis. And we did cold laser on that cat. She brought him in three times a week for us to cold laser. And the cat was so cooperative. We were able to cold laser the mouth. Solved the problem. And I, I think I used some cooling herbs and, you know, we used, a, I think, a hypoallergenic, like we went with a rabbit based mm-hmm. diet. You know, we basically did everything we did to cool this animal, but we used cold laser and it did great. We got it cleared up within a couple of months and then um, cat did great for a while. And then I think a year later we had to go through another round. The cat's like 10 years old now and you never know that it ever had the problem. It, yeah. um, you know, so there are ways around it. I wish I'd had this. It would have been a lot easier than that poor woman having to drive her cat back and forth three times a week <laughs> but she did it and, you know the cat's doing great so um you know it's, it's just this is great to have another tool in the toolbox and now i'm feeling kind of bad because i've been using it on my dog with the, the kidney mouth um but i have a puppy i, I like i re- need to give it to everybody well, 13 cats hmm. uh but you need to give it to everybody and uh you know i i I think I think a lot of our cancer is just that chronic inflammation. It takes mm-hmm. it takes years for cancer to appear, and I think yes. that chronic inflammation is just a huge contributor to that. So anything that we can do, starting I, certainly the senior animals need to be on something like this because by that point they've all got mobility problems. They've all got some arthritis somewhere. Cats are so good at hi- hiding their arthritis, hiding their pain. And I think if we could convince people that, no, this should, should just be part of every kitty cat's routine, um, the cats will feel a lot better, even though we as, a, as the observers may not be very good at telling what's going on because cats are so good at hiding it. Um, right. But I think, I, you know, I've got a cat who blew an ACL a couple years ago. Poor guy. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, you know, with, as, as far as the belt goes, you got to have proper occlusion is if they have a bell occlusion, that's painful and they won't chew as effectively. And as a result, develop periodontal disease much more rapidly. If you have a fractured tooth or an abscess tooth, basically that's painful. They won't chew in that area. Plaque accumulates much faster and there's result periodontal disease on top of the abscess as well. And that infection can go systemically in those abscesses. Uh, I mean, we, I, documented a killer whale that had an abscessed tooth and, and to basically cause the death of the animal. Mm-hmm. And, and so, I mean, it can really, really affect the whole body's disposition and basically have some long-term effects as far as negative effects. And that's why, you know, having a good, healthy mouth is, you know, the gateway of health for the body. So as a result, Home care is very, very important. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so you said you, I, you you've done dental work on all different kinds of species. Has this product been used in herbivores? Can can we use? I mean, it's a beef fat, but can we use it like on horses? I've I've got a, a miniature a mini henny. She's a basically a miniature mm-hmm. mule yeah. um, that has a horrible malocclusion. <laughs> Have you used this on horses at all? We have used it on horses. Uh, I've used this in, uh, on a lot of different animals. The the one of the most effective. I mean, herbivores can be benefited tremendously. A lot of the, uh, research of this product was done on rabbits, okay. and, which are herbivores, and uh, had tremendous benefits. Tremendous. Uh, we actually even got bone regrowth than rabbits. Wow. And, uh, and, you know, on top of the control of periodontal disease, that type of thing. So any animal can benefit from this if they have bacteria in the mouth and, and plaque, which 99% of animals do. Yeah. And the, the aardvark is probably the, about the only one that does it, right? So <laughs> that does that. But, uh, you know, they do get oral disease, but uh, not uh, plaque so much. So what so, kind of dosing am I going to need to use on 
you know, we used to have show horses. So when you have a highly competitive hunter jumper horse, we're talking joint breakdown. Actually, even the Western horses doing the reining, the high performance, a lot of joint breakdown. Um, and so I'm thinking again, if this was part of their regimen on a daily basis as a prevention of inflammation, as well as treatment, do we have dosing on big animals? Not, not do I need yet, to give yeah. them the whole bottle a day? <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if it was an elephant, maybe. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> if it was a horse, I, I would probably give uh, maybe a quarter of a bottle, I mean, which is quite a bit. Uh, you know, so it would it would add up a little bit. But uh, when you have talked about the joints of these animals and that having inflammation, some dis joint disease, you can put it on topically and just rub it in because there's also a transdermal absorption. So you're going to get control that way. Right. That's probably the best way for, for the joints. But again, there's going to be some systemic effects from that as well. There is a, a, a solution that uh, League Size makes for topical administration on horses and large animals. And as a result, but it's not for oral use. Uh, okay. As far as for oral use of the equine species at, at the present, you'd have to get a bunch of these capsules, cut them off, and squeeze a bunch in and then put it around the lips and mouth. Okay. And as you were saying, Dr. Judy, as well, um, laser. Well, laser promotes, you know, more blood flow and also T helper cells or white blood cells activity concentrated where the laser is. So like Dr. Anthony was explaining, that's basically what 1TDC does. It works with the white blood cells. So if you do a laser treatment first and then you topically apply 1TDC, you're getting much more benefit from your laser therapy. So it's a, this, again, this is a great solution for rehab dogs, but it's also for senior dogs that are getting their laser treatments. That's a great way to really help them out. Get the laser and then put the 1TDC on top of it. It's definitely something to do. Awesome. Well, that, let's be specific, cold lasers. Yeah. The, the other lasers could burn and cut tissues. So you don't want them. <laughs> <laughs> on there. Oh, so there's a big difference. <laughs> I, there's, something I, there's something I wanted to share with you, and, and this might be something you want to share with the audience. So one of the passions for Dr. Anthony is obviously education, as you can tell. So one of the things that he has developed with our with the Elite Science team, he's developed a uh, dental report card. It's a very, very simple document that allows a pet owner to, with pictures, not fancy periodontal terms and stages and all of that, terms that we all understand and pictures we can all relate to. So I, I have it and I can pull up on my screen so I can show it if you want, but it's something that we, I think would be very valuable for your audience to get access to. Now, so they can have kind of this initial evaluation. It's not replacing the need for a veterinarian. But it allows you to kind of get a sense of where you're at with your, your pet's mouth, cat or dog, and then make that, I really need to go see the veterinarian. Yeah. Or take that information and have the veterinarian do the final proper diagnosis. So that's something that I, I definitely, you know, if you would like, we can. Yeah, if you on. could send us a link to that and we can include mm -hmm. that along with this, that would that would be amazing. Absolutely. I'll there's pass a, it on. That's there's a... Uh, what, what do you call it? The I, IPS, or basically you, you put your camera on the, the pixels and, and basically a, a, the video comes on. Olivia, oh, cool. What do you call it? Oh, like a little QR code. Yeah. Yeah. A little so, QR code, yes, whatever. QR code. Yeah. I, yeah. So basically on the dental report card, you have the evaluation on the inside, but on the, on, on the back cover of it, Dr. Anthony, one of his students at the University of Carolina, North Carolina, basically did an eval a self-evaluation to teach the pet owner with a little gauze how to go on the gum lines and see if there's some blood, which is an indication of, you know, potentially you have some gum health issues. Uh, there's yellow, it's yellowish on the gauze. That means you have some plaque and potentially tartar here. So it's it's a it's a very simple tool with a QR code that you can look and see a professional doing it. That brings them a step closer to do this self-evaluation that can lead to a proper diagnosis by a professional. 
Perfect. Yeah. Basically, basically, if there's blood on it, they should be seeing their veterinarian right away. If there's plaque, do some home care. Or and if they don't know what type of home care, that's where they need to talk to their veterinarian. However, basically, if there's blood, more than likely the veterinarian needs to do some work. Simple as that. Perfect. Perfect. So just plain to play the simple, you know, terms. That makes it pretty easy. <laughs> well, thank you very much. This this is this is wonderful information. Um, you know, it's just, and I like that the product makes it pretty easy. Um, you know, we're all we're all lazy. We, we can we can understand that we need to brush every day or twice a day. And I, you know, I, I hear from people, well, he goes to the groomer every six weeks and they brush his teeth for me. And I'm like, wow. Okay. You know, I'm not going to brush my teeth once every six weeks, but sure. <laughs> yeah. You go to your hairdresser and get your teeth cleaned at that time. But exactly. exactly. You know, maybe I'm going to use that analogy. I love it. I love it. And I haven't had my hair done since before COVID. So um, yeah, two and a half years later, maybe I'll go get my teeth brushed. <laughs> <laughs> well, what the only thing that I would really like to stress also is that even though this drug, this product is so good, it's not a miracle product. Right. Okay. It, you know, it's not going to cure things and whatnot, but it's going to help tremendously. Yeah. So it's it's you know, just another layer on the care that's that hopefully will will prevent some some heartache down the line. So exactly. Perfect. Well, thank you very much. This has been great. I I, uh, I appreciate the connection and um, I appreciate your your work and your research and your 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 being a pioneer in this realm because it certainly did need to happen. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you for having us. All right. All right. Talk to you guys later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.